Okay. Let's go ahead and get started with these. So um, don't forget that when we are working with these equations, the very first thing that we need to make sure that we do is decide where the x is going to go. Now, it doesn't really matter where the x goes. Um, you can put it pretty much wherever you want. But the point is, make the decision so that it's easier to work with, right? And it doesn't matter which way you go. Like, for example, for number one, I could choose, I want the x on the left-hand side. So since I want the x on the left-hand side, let's subtract the 3x over. We get negative x plus 3 equals 2. We can then subtract the 3, because if the x is on the left, the number needs to go on the right. 2 minus 3 should be negative 1, and then divide both sides by negative 1. Right? And that should be our answer. Positive one. Yeah. All right. So for number two, we're going to do the same thing. You know, and to show you, we can choose where the X goes. You're in charge of placing it. So like if I want the X on the right hand side now, let's subtract five X from both sides. So I subtract five X from both sides. Negative two is left on the left. And that's what's on the right. So the x is on the right. I need to move the numbers to the left. So I'm going to say, all right, let's subtract this 3. I already owe you $2. Now I'm going to hold 3 more. So I owe you $5 now. And then when you divide both sides by 2, and I'm going to flip it around. Negative 5 over 2. That's our answer. Negative 5 over 2. That is the fraction that is our answer. Uh, if you prefer to have a decimal, or if you're told to have a decimal, you can take 5, cut it in half, and get 2 and 1 half, right? And then last one here. You know, let's, let's get the x on the left again. So let's subtract 4x from both sides. Negative 6 and negative 4 make negative 10. And then we can subtract 1 from both sides. And then when we divide, notice this negative 4 over negative 10 can be simplified, right? x equals negative 4 over negative 10, right? But we can simplify this. The two negatives go away. And then 4 and 10 both have a factor of 2 we can divide. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And there we go. So x equals 2 fifths. And that should be your final answer, right? Or you could say as a decimal, it's 0.4. But I, either of these answers are interchangeable. You should be able to produce each of these on command, depending on what the problem is asking for. Read the directions, right? All right. Uh, what are we doing today? We can use perpendicular and angle bisectors to find lengths of missing sides. How are we going to do this? We're going to use the theorems. We're going to use the theorems and we're going to apply them to our models. Uh, we're going to have a lot of models to work with today. And the two theorems that I'm going to show you are um, basically just how to show that the two lines that we're looking at are the same. Um, and the other thing we're going to talk a little bit about is how to, how to determine distance from something to something. and we're going to talk about that. So let's move on.
the perpendicular bisector theorem and its converse. Basically, this is, again, something we're going to be able to say it goes both ways. It's a biconditional, right? So if we start out with a, with a picture like this, then it turns out that the distance from any point on this line to the two endpoints of our line that we've cut in half are the same. So it doesn't matter where P is on this uh, perpendicular bisector, if it's down here, or if it's the one that they drew, or if it's up here, as long as it's on this line, as long as it's on this line and it goes from the endpoints to this same point here, then the two lines that we draw are the same. And vice versa, if we start out with two lines that are the same, if we draw a straight line through this, you'll have to excuse my not so straight line, but um, if we draw a straight line through this, and you know, if we if we say that it's uh, ba basically what we can do is if we draw this line, if we draw if we draw this line so that it cuts AB in half, we know it's perpendicular. If we know that if we draw it so that it's perpendicular, then it cuts AB in half. Basically the the perpendicular bisector contains this point all the time so again it doesn't matter how tall the triangle is as long as it's an isosceles triangle if we slice that isosceles triangle exactly down the middle that's its perpendicular bisector all right so let's go into some practice problems here again our goal is to figure out the length of a side or you know, at least, hey, here's here's the thing, find your x, right? So what I want to do is I want to be able to find the length of AB here. So it's not good enough to just find x, right? I want the length of AB. We're going to have to use x. We're going to have to find x. We're going to have to say, all right, well, look, I've got the perpendicular bisector here. So this is an isosceles triangle, ABC, which means that these two sides are the same. 4x, therefore, had better be the same as 6x minus 10, right? And again, you're you're looking at this and you're saying, okay, well, what do I do? Where do I do? Where do I bring the? Where do I bring the variable? Well, look, if I take the 4x and I bring it over to the other side, is there going to be anything left on the left hand side? No, don't do that, right? Let there still be something on the left-hand side. Let me subtract 6x from both sides so that I keep one thing on one side, one thing on the other. 4 minus 6, got negative 2x on the left, negative 10 on the right, and then I can just divide. I get x equals 5. Let me look back at my problem. It says it wants the length of AB. It doesn't want X. I am not done, right? AB, well, a, the length of AB is 4X. And we said that X is 5. So we're going to... X is 5, so... And what is 4 times 5? 20. Right? Right? And if we were to plug it in on the other side, it had better be the same. So let's just make sure. 6 times 5 minus 10. Well, that's 30 minus 10, which is 20. This is 20. We know that we know that we're in the right ballpark, right? We know that we have to be pretty close to being correct, regardless of what's going on. So make sure, double check if you're feeling confused. Always double check if you're feeling confused, if you have the right answer or not, okay? So let's put some time on the clock. Okay, once again, we've got the uh, perpendicular bisector here, so these two sides are the same. 
And I want to find the length of QR. Let's figure out n first. 3n minus 1 equals 5n minus 7. Okay, well, let me solve for n. Um, I don't know. Let's get the numbers on. Let's get the, the variable on the left. So let me subtract 5n from both sides. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Now I'm going to get the number on the right-hand side. Let's. This is a minus 1, so we'll add 1 to both sides. Negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. And then let me divide by negative 2 to get n by itself. n equals 3. Let me go back and look at the directions. It says, what's the length of QR? So am I done? No. Let's go back in and figure out the length of QR. So 5n minus 7, that's QR. What's n? n is 3, right? So let's set that equal. So QR equals 5n minus 7 and n. 5 times what? 5 times n is 3. 5 times 3, 15, minus 7 is 8. And again, let's go back and look at the other one just to make sure. 3 times 3 is 9 minus 1 had better be 8. So we know that we did it right. It's not enough to, it's not enough to like just do the problem and hope for the best. Each and every one of you is capable of leaving every problem with the knowledge and the confidence that you've done what you've done correctly. Don't be afraid to stick with a problem until you're confident with it. It's okay to do that. It's okay to say, I'm not confident. Let me test. Let me check. Let me double check. Did I... You know, did I do, there's a lot of negative signs in here. Did I screw up any negative signs? That's a really common thing to do. All right, stuff like that. It's okay for you to check your work to make sure that you're right. Because sometimes, you, you know, it's just a matter of not knowing what's exactly right and going back and checking, and that's okay. All right, uh, so... Next thing I briefly want to talk about is how we find distance. There's no distance formula for a point to a line because a line has lots of points. How do I pick which one? And the way that you determine the distance between a point and a line is you drop down a perpendicular like this, and then you measure the length of this perpendicular. So this right here, the length of that segment represents the length of this point to this line. The length of this segment right here, that represents the distance from this point to this line. And then, you know, we're going to talk about this particular structure here, where now instead of having a, a segment perpendicular bisector, we've got an angle bisector. And it turns out that the distance from the point to the line as we define it is going to be the same one thing to the other. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, there we go. So <clears throat> th this is just what I was saying earlier. If you've got an angle bisector, you see that this ray in the middle, QS, cuts angle PQR in half, right? That's why these two are the same. Cut them in half. Any point along this line, just like the last one, if we drop a perpendicular down, we drop a perpendicular down over here, we get that these two are the same thing. It doesn't matter where we go. We could, we could go at S. We could pick a point in the middle. We could pick a point out here. If we drop perpendicular lines down to the outer wings of our angle then we end up with the same distance and vice versa right if it turns out that the point that we draw somewhere in the middle of this angle has these perpendiculars the same like this then if we were to take a ray 
and draw it through QS like this. If we draw that ray from Q to S and through, then we automatically take this big angle and we cut it in half. And that's what we're trying to say here, right? That's what we're trying to say. So once again, notice if I've got the angle bisector going right here, then these two pieces are the same. So that means I can set these equal to each other. Let me solve for x. Once again, do I want to take this 7x and move it over to the other side? No, it's already by itself. Don't do that. That's silly. Leave the 7x here. Subtract the 2x over so that we have something on both sides. 7 minus 2, we get 5x equals 25, and then we can divide both sides by 5. We get x equals 25 divided by 5, which is 5. And once again, let's look at our instructions. We want to know what the length is of Rm. So are we done? No. So look, Rm is this one, right? Well, what's x? 7x. Well, what's x? x is 5. 7 times x. 7 times 5. Like this. And what is that? Better be 35. 7 times 5 is 35. And once again, if you need to, double check your work. 2 times x plus 25. That's 10 plus 25 is 35. Same as this, as we expected, as we demand that it should be, because that's what the theorem told us. That's what we should be expecting to be true. All right? Okay, once again, let's look at these. So we've got the angle bisector here, so we just set these two equal to each other, right? Because they're the same, right? That's the same as that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that now. We got 6x plus 3 equals 4x plus 9. And once again, we're going to subtract the 4x over. 6 minus 4 is 2. Then we're going to subtract the 3 over. There's our x, but we want to find the length of fb, right? So let's go back. fb is this one. So let's put x in, right? 6 times what? 6 times x. x is what? 3. So 6 times 3 plus 3. 6 times 3 is 18 plus 3 is 21. So that should be our answer. Let's double check, because if the other one is the same, we know that we're probably right. 4 times 3 plus 9. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 9 is 21. 21, 21, all is well, all is good. 